So when I was a kid, I was in Boy Scouts. Now I know what you're thinking. Now I fly through hurricanes. So who's the dork now? Every year we would do this popcorn sale. It was kind of our fundraiser for the year. All the boys would go door to door selling popcorn. I never really cared about it until one year there was a two week backpacking trip in New Mexico that I really wanted to go on. So I was trying to sell as much popcorn as possible so that I could go on this trip. My dad being much more experienced and smarter than 12 year old me took me to the rich person's neighborhood in our town and I went door to door trying to sell popcorn. So I was a pretty shy kid. So I would walk up to the door, ring the doorbell, or knock softly and if nobody came to the door I was so happy that I didn't have to talk to somebody. I felt like I was bothering them. I felt like they were busy doing something. They they stopped what they were doing to talk to me and then I'm just trying to beg them for money. I just felt really dirty about the whole thing. So when they did answer the door I would kind of just like look at my feet, hand them the order form and say would you like to buy some popcorn? I was trying to be as quick as possible. I thought maybe if I'm really fast and just ask them straight up if they wanted to buy popcorn, they would appreciate how fast I was being and wouldn't be so bothered and they would just buy a couple boxes and I'd be on my way. I sold a fair amount of popcorn doing that. You know, I mean, a shy little kid knocks on the door. Yeah, people are gonna buy a couple boxes, but I sold nowhere near the popcorn that my friend did. He was a salesman, let me tell you. I asked him how he sold so much popcorn and he said it was easy. I just brought a bag of popcorn from the grocery store and asked him if they wanted any before I started talking about the popcorn. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, I went to the Walmart. I bought a big bag of popcorn. And when they answered the door, I said, hey, do you want some popcorn? And as they were sitting there snacking on it, they'd look at the order form. And as people were like reading the form, he would notice what popcorn their eye was caught on and he would start to describe it. Oh yeah, that's the caramel corn. It's really sweet, kind of got a crunchy candy candy coating on the outside. It's really great for holidays. And he would do this for every single flavor of popcorn. While their mouths were already watering from munching on the popcorn he had brought to their front door. One time when I was knocking on doors, somebody asked me which flavor I liked best. And I'm just awkwardly standing there holding the order form. I'm like, what do you want to know my opinion for? You're the one who wants popcorn. What does it matter if I like it or not? So I just sort of stood there like deer in the headlights, didn't say anything. And the guy at the door said, well, if you don't like any of the flavors, I'm not going to buy anything if you don't even like it. And right then he was trying to teach me something about sales. Now, it took me 15 years to get it, but I finally understood the lesson he was trying to teach me. So what do you do when you actually have somebody's attention? They're, you know, mildly interested in your product. You've talked about it for a little while. What do you do to actually close the sale? That's the topic of today's episode of Maker's Money. So if you've watched the first two Maker's Money videos, you'll know that there's a customer at literally every price point. So you know you might as well price high and swing for the fences. And you'd also know that you can find people to pay that price just by changing everyday conversation and telling more people about what you do. So how do you actually close that first sale? You've got somebody hooked. They're on the line. How do you reel them in and finish the sale? So we hear from a lot of y'all that do craft shows, farmers markets, um, that sort of thing. We've been to those. We've seen the guy or girl there selling the stuff that they make. Every time they're sitting in a lawn chair, usually with a Coke or something, and they're just not engaging with the people walking past the booth. And he's just not trying to interrupt anybody. He's not trying to, to impede on anybody else's day. He's not trying to be pushy. He's not trying to be uh, salesy. He just thinks my work is so good it should sell itself. People just like me at the front door trying to sell popcorn, you don't want to bother people. Y you know, like most of us, like, can, we, can we just be honest? Most of us that make stuff, we like it because it's a private activity. We do it quietly in our basement or in our garage without the interference of other people. So we naturally expect that when we go to sell the product, we should carry the same attitude. And that's why we see so many people sitting in lawn chairs, not really engaging or talking to their customers. And at the end of every show, he packs up all his items into his crates and he's packing up more than he's sold all day. The product will not sell itself. And for those of you that think that that's how it works, yeah, every once in a while, the stars are all gonna align and the right customer comes at the right time and you just happen to be the person that can give them what they're already committed to buying and it just works out that way. But if you wanna grow your business, if you wanna depend on the money coming in, then you have to take responsibility for the sales process. As great and wonderful and beautiful as the stuff that you make is, you have got to get people excited about your product. Then the sale will happen automatically, but not until you get people really jazzed about your product. You sell them on it emotionally, it's game over and you've got your first sale. 
All right, so no more theory. How do you actually make your first sale and get people excited about your product? So step one, get somebody's attention. If you don't have somebody's attention, it's pretty hard to get them excited about anything. We talked in the last Maker's Money video about how to get somebody's attention and whose attention to even get. So go back and watch that video if you're confused about who to start with. And then once you've got somebody's attention, you need to tease out their interest. You need to see what about your product do they like? Do they like the color of your products? Do they like the style? Do they like the shape that it's in? Do they need it to solve a problem? Or do they literally just want something that looks pretty? This is where you have to pay attention to what they want. You can't just spend the whole time rattling off facts and cool things about your business and what you build. You have to step back and actually listen to what they're saying. Just like the kids selling popcorn, you have to focus on what their eyes are looking at so that you know what they care about and what they want. For example, for the realtors that we sell cutting boards to as closing gifts, what they care about is that their name's on the back. They think it's so cool that we can engrave their name in wood. And so that's what we focus on when we're selling. We don't talk about how it's made out of solid cherry and solid maple and it's got high quality rubber feet because that's not what their eyes are looking at. For the realtor, they just want their name on there so they can get a call back. They also want to know that they're giving a nice gift that'll be appreciated because they spend a lot of money on these gifts, which is why we talk of the fact that these are nice gifts and they, and they offer a good feeling. When somebody opens up that box and unwraps the board, it makes them feel really good and really happy. Also, when you notice that somebody's getting excited about something, you gotta hype them up. I bought a suit the other day for a wedding. I thought the man at the suit store had a crush on me. He was telling me some really nice things about how good that suit looked. And all that was doing was trying to get me excited about how I looked in the suit so that I would buy it. Encourage them. Oh yeah, that's a great color. You know what, that wood, it's walnut. You know, make them feel like they're making the right choice by choosing that product. And take your time here. Don't rush anybody into it because what you're trying to do is you're warming the customer up to your product. The best tip we can give you for this part of the process is to ask questions. Ask leading questions. Do not be the one talking the most. If you're a chatty salesperson, nobody's going to buy from you. Ask questions. Get to know the person a little bit. It's not ingenuine. You're not cheating them out of anything. You're genuinely asking about their interests. Slow down, ask questions, and really get to the meat of why they're considering buying your product. And after you've done that for a while, you've been a good listener, you've been asking lots of questions, they've been doing all the talking and you're just sitting back, just taking it all in. And after a while, you get to take a guess and you're guessing on whether or not they're ready to make a purchase. So here's what you say. Can I ring that up for you? Are you opposed to putting in an order? Did you wanna look at anything else before we go ahead with what you have here? Can we get a deposit to put you on the schedule? Cash or card? If you take the guests too late, they'll have enough time to talk themselves out of it and maybe realize they're a little too excited to make the purchase. And if you guess too early, they'll tell you why it's too early and then you just go back to asking questions. It's always better to guess early than it is to guess late. But bottom line, at this point in the conversation, you need a commitment to buy. They need to let you know that they're gonna make a purchase. Then you can spend your time hashing out the details of design, size, delivery, price, all that stuff. But until they've committed to buy, don't waste your time doing any of that other stuff. You're just gonna lose money and time in the long run from people who weren't gonna buy anyways. Get the commitment to buy. Sometimes you don't even need to talk about price. Very, very rarely is price actually a problem for the customer. By virtue of shopping for it and asking questions about it and looking at it, they're already thinking about buying it. All you've got to do is get that commitment from them, then you can focus on the actual details of making the sale. When we're doing custom furniture jobs, we don't design anything until we've gotten that commitment to buy. We don't nail down a final price. We don't nail down a final design. We need that commitment to buy before we waste our time doing all the other detail work. Otherwise, you're just gonna waste half your week doing designs and quotes for people that are never gonna buy from you. If you're not doing a sale right there in the moment, we strongly recommend that you take a down payment. We've been burned by this way too many times. We require at least a 50% down payment for the projects that we do. That tells us that the customer is serious and that their commitment to buy is real. Sometimes people will commit to you that they're gonna buy something. We've had this happen. They've committed to buying from us. We've been halfway through building it and then they call us and say, eh, I don't want it anymore. 
I got no money from them. I got no contract from them. And I'm halfway through building it and I've got materials and time invested in this thing and I'm not gonna get anything from it. You need to be taking a down payment of at least 50% to weed out the serious from the non-serious customers. So that's it. Follow those steps and you're ready to make your first sale. Just make sure you're ready to take their payment once you find out they wanna buy. And uh, don't be surprised if this happens sooner than later. So you should be able to go out and get your first job now. You have everything you need. But what if? Someone asks you to do something you don't want to do, or you have a customer that looks like they're going to be way too problematic or flaky. Sometimes you just have to say no to a job. But how and why would you say no to a job? That's what we're talking about on the next episode of Maker's Money. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell so that you don't miss it when it comes out. We'll catch you on the next one.